Good day, everyone. So today we are going to discuss the first trimester CNS abnormalities. This really is a very difficult topic, but it, we have to learn it because the way things are moving forward in, in ultrasound is that we are trying to diagnose things earlier and earlier in pregnancy. And the brain, which has the most abnormalities that we see, and the heart, which is equally important, are the ones that we need to learn about the, 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 the first. So let's discuss that and let's see what we learn. But before we move on, to the CNS abnormalities per se, remember that you can't forget the basic principles of ultrasound, which is that if you see the first trimester, make sure that the fetus is viable, ensure that the gestation is correct, whatever the LMP period is, the gestation corresponds, or at least get a good CRL so you know the gestational age. Make sure that if there are twins that you confirm the chorionicity, you have to give um, risks for aneuploidies. And of course, we then move on to the structural malformations and make sure that other than the brain, there are not other malformations either. All this has to be done keeping the Alara principle, which means that you should not increase the heat of the scan so much that it may cause uh, damage. So remember your thermal index and your mechanical index. Um, as as I said, it's a it's a difficult uh, thing to do. It's difficult to do the first trimester CNS examinations, but if you do it in a structured way, um, which I will describe as we go along, we will be able to diagnose a reasonable number of uh, uh, abnormalities. The thing that is uh difficult is that you may see something, but because abnormalities can evolve, um, certain things you, you may not be able to see so clearly in the first trimester and they evolve, but other things are absolutely clear and you know that this is an abnormal brain. So, so this is a schematic diagram of a sagittal view of the fetal brain. And the thing that you need to remember is at least like the basic anatomy. So I find it the easiest if you identify where the occipital bone is and then count above it or below it. So below the occipital bone is your nuchal translucency. And then you, when you start counting above it, you've got the cisterna magna and then you have the choroid plexus and then the fourth ventricle. So the choroid plexus is the fourth ventricle. And then of course the brain stem, the midbrain and the, um, uh, the, the thalamus. So if you see it on the way we see it in ultrasound, it would be that this is the occiput. So you're looking for the nuchal translucency. Of course, below that, above that is the cisterna magna. Above that is the choroid of the fourth ventricle, this is the fourth ventricle, and then this is the brain stem, and the midbrain and the thalamus over here. And this shows you the same thing again. So if you do a lot of reading, you'll find that there are things called the brain stem, which is here to the brain stem occiput um, ang uh, uh, ratios. Again, as I was telling you, this is the occiput. So the brightest thing is the occiput. And then just above that is the cisterna magna, the choroid, the brain, um, the, the fourth ventricle, and then the brain stem over here. So, uh, so, so there would be times when you would need to know, know, know the angles, but just remember these three spaces. And uh, next time you do your first trimester, make sure that you are really familiar with this. So when you've come to examine the brain, you are trying to go from top to bottom. So you have your axial planes where you're going down like this, and then your sagittal planes where you're seeing things sideways, so you're going like this, and then the coronal planes when you're going front on. So in the axial plane, the transventricular and the transthalamic plane are important. And this is what it looks like. So when you come from top down, you have 
the transventricular plane where you have to identify the fox and these are the choroid plexuses within that and then when you go down a bit more over here you start identifying the thalamus over here and the cerebral peduncles over there and then go down even further and, and, then, and here you start identifying the cerebellum and then the fourth ventricle uh, which is over here, the cisterna magna, the fourth ventricle and then this is the back of the head. And then you have the last or the, the actual plane which is plane four as described by Rabbi Chawi where you see the orbits and the maxillary processes and uh, the, the two nasal bones in front and then moving on to the coronal plane where here you're trying to see the two nasal bones so this is actually quite nice when you are not sure are you seeing an absent nasal bone so it's nice to bring your probe and see it from the front to see the two nasal bones on top of the two maxillary processes and over here you've got the alveolar ridge and over here you've got the mandibular gap um, which which is also important so if this gap is not there then there's a higher chance that there is a micronathia. So these are the, the planes that we use. The other thing which is very important is you need to have some working knowledge of embryology um, because when you're looking at abnormalities if you have some basic idea of embryology you know what, um, what abnormalities to ex uh, uh, expect. So this is just a list of the timeline of what uh, happens at different times of the gestation. But this is what I would want you to absolutely be sure, you know, at least have a basic understanding, which is you have your ectodermal plate, which then becomes the neural plate. It differentiates um, into the neuroectodermal plate. But what is important is that this neuroectodermal plate kind of invaginates and closes up. So you have it invaginating and closing up and it then forming the spinal cord. And this is what it looks like from the side. Um, so you have it like a tube which then zips up from the top. And if it doesn't zip up properly, that's how you have your spina bifida happening. But uh, if it zips up properly, you have a normal spine. But at the top, while the tube is zipping up, things are happening at the anterior part of, part of this tube, which is the formation of the primary vesicles of the brain. So remember in embryology, lots of things are happening simultaneously. We, for the sake of understanding, tend to try and learn things sequentially. But actually in embryology, everything is happening at the same time. So while the spine is zipping up, also at the top end, the primary vesicles of the brain are forming. And this is what I want you to remember, that these vesicles essentially are just this this uh, the, the neural tube having different bul bulges and bends happening such that you have three primary vesicles so and these are known as the pro prosencephalon the mesencephalon and the rhombencephalon that means the forebrain the midbrain and the hindbrain and these four mid and hindbrain then go on to further divide so the prosen mesenkephalon divides into the telencephalon and the diencephalon. The mesenkephalon just go, it, it doesn't divide. But the rhombenkephalon further divides into the met and the myelinkephalon. And these are the future um, structures of the brain as seen here. So the most common forebrain abnormality is that if this division doesn't place takes place, if prosencephalon does not divide um, and to form the uh, the cerebrum, you have you have something called holoprosencephaly. You have an undivided brain, and if you have problems in the division of the pons and cerebellum, you have posterior fossa defects. So at least a working knowledge of embryology is important.